I remember hearing voices and people was all around me in the emergency room and this guy's telling me that I've been in a wreck. One minute you're making videos, trying to change the world, influence manufacturing, bring awareness and education, and the next minute you're fighting for your life in the emergency room. Jesse was supposed to go to Kroger to pick up steaks. Did all the shopping, did everything I needed to do, was on the way back. And he just stayed gone forever. I just did, had no idea where he was. And I texted him and said, hey, are you still at Kroger? Because it's been, you know, an hour. Immediately, I got a phone call from him and it was the police department. So law enforcement is having to tell my wife what happened. And they said, hi, this is, I think it's Kevin from Bartonville Police Department. And your husband's been in a wreck. We are cutting him out of the vehicle as we speak. Their vehicle was up on top of mine and they had to pull it off and lay it on its side just to be able to get mine out from under it so they could get me out. And they did have to use the jaws of life. They cut the whole side of my vehicle off to be able to get me out of the truck. And I was never unconscious apparently. I was talking to the police the whole time. They put me in the ambulance. They drove me to the hospital. They did a CT scan on my brain because I had a small brain hemorrhage, but I don't, I don't remember any of that. I remember hearing voices and people was all around me in the emergency room. And this guy's telling me that I've been in a wreck. Look down, my wrist is all over on the side because it's dislocated. I've got blood everywhere. So I walk in and he is in a neck uh, brace. He's got blood coming out of his eyeball. He's got blood all over his hands, like all the way up his arms. And um, the whole time he's asking where I am, where our son is. Is everyone okay? Did I hurt anybody? She's telling me, you know, Isaac's fine. He's in the bed. Um, Barry's there at our house watching over him so Allison, my wife, could come to the hospital. And immediately, I went into panic mode. Not because I'm in the ER, life's on the line, all that. It's because Barry's at home alone with my child. <laughs> Two days later is when I had my surgery on my wrist and they put a single screw in the side to basically hold it back together. I'm standing outside in the hall while the doctor is doing some, something and the nurse hands me a little box and he says, here, this is his wedding ring that we cut off of him. In that moment, I realized that there are probably lots of people that like that's all they leave the hospital with. It's like the little box of their loved one's belongings. So after I made it home and, and I'm starting the recovery process, I'm getting everyday glass and stuff is, is making its way out of my skin that I'm having to pick out and try to work around cleaning everything. And it was, it was kind of a nightmare. Mobility was limited. You know, I've got a two-year-old that's wanting to play, needing to be held, and I couldn't do it. And that was not only physically demanding, but it was very emotionally damaging. And I went months that, like that. Couldn't pick my son up, couldn't play with him. I couldn't do chores around the house. And initially the orthopedic doctor thought he would be fine. Like, we don't need therapy, you're a young guy, um, just handling your son day-to-day -day life, you should be fine, you don't need therapy. After a few weeks goes by, I'd go back, and then finally after I think three months, they were like, hey, you're all healed up, good job. Take your brace off, you're, you're free to go. And I'm like, yeah, I can't move my wrist. It's not healed at all. I could move it back a little bit, but coming straight down, like moving it like this wasn't happening. Straight was as far down as I could go. So I had a ton of pain and I had no mobility. And at that point he was like, okay, maybe we need to go 
and get some therapy done on it. So he prescribed me with occupational therapy and that's when I went over to the outpatient clinic and met Destiny and Steven, the best occupational therapists on the planet. When Jesse came in, he had a distal radius fracture, build up a scar tissue from the lack of movement. Um, his uh, joint had stiffened. And then on top of that, the muscles surrounding the joint had shortened. That's gonna limit motion because we need our muscles to stretch and elongate while we're mobilizing them. They contract and they elongate with motion. One of those things that we used for him was using ISTEM tools, instrument assisted soft tissue mobilization. One of the ways that I use it is to identify and then address scar tissue buildup. I use that tool to create little micro traumas and work down that scar tissue, break it down so that the uh, blood system can circulate it back out, break it down later in the body, and then new, newer, healthier tissue will grow in that place. They're working on me with these tools that I'd never really seen before. And I was like, you're just rubbing on my skin. Like, is that really gonna work? But the results that I started getting from that was just amazing. Like I could not believe what was happening. I started getting my mobility back. I was able to bend my wrist. I was still getting a lot of pain, but I was starting to be able to see some recovery here. You know, in machining, we pick up heavy things all the time. I'm picking up vices, tools. You're constantly twisting wrenches and stuff like you use your wrists a lot. The other reason why I had used it for Jesse is because the muscles have shortened. When the muscles are shortened, they're usually more contracted and denser and more tense. And I use a parallel scraping motion to basically essentially elongate the muscle. So I'm stretching the muscle out using a tool. And then we usually couple that with additional stretches to kind of um, emphasize the treatment that we just did. I just get to thinking like where I would be right now if I'd never gone to therapy, if I'd never met Destiny and Steve and they made me feel like they were extremely invested and that was what was amazing and I just wanted to give back to them I was like what could I do for them that that would show my appreciation it just hit me you know she's using this muscle scraper on me every day and that would be a good one to make I think I can make that and make it special so that's how I got the idea of making their own personal muscle scraper so I became really fascinated with this tool and it became one of my favorite parts about therapy. Already knowing that I wanted to give back to them, I wanted to do something special. I just thought I, oh, it would be awesome if I made them their own custom muscle scraper. And you know what? I'm not gonna do it out of stainless steel or plastic like all the other ones. I'm gonna do it out of 6AL4V titanium. Now in designing this, I was really focused on customization. So I've got three of these to make, one for Destiny, Steven, and Rebecca. And a couple of the highlighting features here is I'm gonna engrave each one with their name, and I'm also gonna engrave it with something more personal based off our conversations that we had in therapy. So for Destinies, we really bonded over the Witcher series. She's a big gamer and she liked the games and I liked the Netflix series. So I'm gonna put the Witcher emblem on hers. Steven's also a big gamer and he's into racing and Gran Turismo. So I'm gonna put the Gran Turismo logo on his with his initials underneath. Now, Rebecca caught on that I was making these as a surprise and she hinted that she would like the South Korean flag put on hers. With these added features, these are really gonna be a unique, one of a kind tool tailored to each individual. So now we're gonna get our material loaded in our DVF 5000 and start making some chips. Now, to rough this, I'm gonna be using a brand new tool from Kinemetal, the Harvey 4 8 Fluid End Mill. So it's gonna drop down pretty deep and then work its way up just to give me some clearance. Now, after our roughing tool runs, the next tool is gonna to be a quarter inch end mill. So the next tool that's going to run is an eighth inch ball nose. For finishing these vertical lines, I'm going to rotate the table down 30 degrees in order to get that tool up off the center so it's cutting with the side of the ball. Next is a 332nd ball nose which is going to engrave the name. Now all of these emblems have some pretty fine detail, so I'm gonna step down to a 132nd ball. That way we end up getting some really good crisp detail. All right, so 
So now all of our detail work is done for side one. Now we're gonna rotate down 90 degrees and take our quarter inch end mill and mill on the back side of this. Now, after this tool does the initial groove, it's actually gonna rough in these fillets. So for finishing these fillets, instead of starting on one side and going all the way to the other side, I'm gonna break this up into three sections. That way I can start from the bottom and work my way up. So op one is complete. I'm so excited with how this thing's coming out. It looks so good. I know they're gonna be so excited to get this, but we've got another one to make. So we wanna save as much material as possible. So I'm gonna take it over to Trevor on the EDM and he's gonna cut this off. So let's get this over to him and we can come back over here to get it finished. <laughs> After 30 minutes, we've cut almost all the way through our part, but we left a small tab so it wouldn't fall into the tank. We also left about 50 thousandths of stock for Jesse to machine off the backside for his next operation. Now that we're done, let's get this part back to Jesse. All right, so Trevor's got a couple of these finished on the wire, and as you can see, he's left us with a minimal amount of material that we need to face off. So all we're gonna do on the second operation is face this off and then we're gonna engrave this same pattern on the second side. But here's our problem. How are we gonna hold it? So as y'all know, I use the KSE 125 vise from Shunk, which is a centric vise. Now that's great for first operations, but not so great for secondary operations. But this is an organic shape. And as you can see, it's gonna be really hard to touch this thing off in X and Y. So what we're gonna do is make some simple soft jaws. So I'm gonna get these soft jaws put on there and we'll go ahead and mill our shape into the jaws. We're just gonna come in with that same half inch end mill and it's gonna mill out our organic shape. Then it's gonna finish the walls and the floor so everything's nice and smooth. And we're also gonna mill a hole that's at a known location so we can actually teach that with the probe and make it really easy to locate if we decide to make more of these in the future. So that's gonna make it to where all I have to do is touch the bottom of the jaws to set my Z and then to set X and Y all I have to do is probe this one hole. All right now we got our soft jaws complete well, now we're going to load our part and start op 2. For op 2 we're going to do the same exact process as op 1. done just yet. I'm going to take it over to the pedestal grinder where I got a scotch bright wheel mounted and I'm going to get rid of all of these tool marks and just blend everything together. After that I'm going to get it over to the tumbler with that walnut shell and give it that nice shine. Now every shop usually has a bench grinder set up with a buffing wheel. Ours has a buffing wheel and scotch bright pads on one side that I'm just using just to get rid of all of these machine marks and any inconsistencies in my finish. I'm using walnut shell in our tumbler today and that usually leaves a film on your parts. So I'm gonna take it over to the sink, wash it with simple soap and water, and then these parts will be ready to be delivered. Here we are 
at the Outpatient Center, I am with Destiny and Steven, and they've been my therapist throughout this process. They've been a tremendous help, have gained so much mobility in my wrist because of these two, and I just wanted to say thank you for all that you've done, and I have made you a special gift. So if y'all wanna open this now, this is for you two. <gasps> oh my. <laughs> Oh my god! Look awesome. They have their name on on them. Oh my god! <gasps> oh my god! Wait, no, no, film, film them in the box. Film them in the box. <gasps> so these are completely customized for both of you, obviously. So cool. <laughs> so Steven and Destiny. Of course, it's got your name. And uh, of course, me and you kind of started talking about The Witcher. Aww. <laughs> Destiny. So. I'm sorry, I'm not good at <laughs> Cheap ones yeah. are stainless. These are actually made out of titanium. Oh my god. So T-A-T-I-A-L-6-4-B. That's amazing. Yay. Well, Stevens, yours has the Gran Turismo, you know, we talked about, and, and I actually put SR edition for Steven Rodriguez. <laughs> <laughs> it feels so nice. So I did try to, like we talked earlier, you know, how we you told me, you know, not as much of a blunt edge, uh -huh. and it's got the dual uh -huh. radius on the end, so uh -huh. it's a smaller radius that transitions into a bigger, Radius, so. It looks so well done. But this is the nicest so grassing <laughs> tool I've ever seen. Yeah, so so that's my way of saying thank you for all that you've done. You're always, <laughs> always welcome, seriously. <laughs> thank yeah. you so much. And I never for a moment ever questioned what my life would be like without him until that happened. And after going through this whole traumatic experience, you really realize how important that person is to you. And like, he is my person. He is my very best friend. He's the person that makes me so mad so many times, but makes me so happy even more times. I'm very thankful almost that the wreck happened because I will never ever take for granted the fact that we're in this life together and that we have this beautiful son together and that every day I get to be a mom and a wife with such a wonderful partner. When I got out of the hospital, word started spreading about the accident and I gotta give a huge shout out to the greatest community on earth. This manufacturing community, so many people was reaching out to me to send me thoughts and prayers and to make sure that I was okay and, and that meant so much to me and my family. I know it's hard to judge people's tone on social media, but I felt like the tone was true generosity. And also to everyone I work with, you know, this truly is my extended family because everyone here was so amazing during my family's time of need. Travis and his wife went an hour out of the way to get groceries for my son that we have to get. Barry, as much as I can't stand that guy, he was there ready to show up when we needed him and he stayed with my son to allow my wife to be able to come to the hospital. Titan came to the hospital to check on me. Countless, like everybody in the company was sending me messages, letting me know if there's anything they could do to help. They were ready and that was just so amazing. You know, I felt the love from everyone in the company and I really, really appreciate that. I'm surprised no one's dead. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. Yeah. Wow. And hey, thanks everybody for watching. And if you've made it this far in the video, don't forget to hug your loved ones and live each day like it's your last because we're not promised tomorrow.